to the MMA Roadshow, episode number 165. My name is John Morgan. Cold coffee. <sighs> He's not with me. He's back home. But I got somebody with me. I'm not sitting here all by myself like I thought I was going to be. Plans have changed. Sebastian Vendel Martinez, our friend from MMA Niet. It's kind of, sort of. <laughs> it's only been a couple of years of you trying to pronounce it, but, you know, we're slowly <laughs> getting there. All right, man. The good friend of the show, of course. We're always hanging out when we're in Europe. Uh... You are here. Not a lot of people are here. Let's just start right there, by the way, okay? Yeah. This is an interesting weekend, okay? A, a lot of our cohorts that would normally be here are not here right now. It's UFC Ghost Town. It's wild, right? Yeah. It is wild. Okay, so uh, we're sitting down on a Thursday night, as we always do, to do the MMA Roadshow, and mm -hmm. most of our crew, and really most, not, not even just our crew, I mean, everybody's crew, I guess, there's just not much media here because they're all at the Bellator show. Now. Yeah. They're going to be here. They're going to do the Bellator show, and then uh, it's pretty interesting. A bunch of the crew has basically commandeered a van to drive them up after uh, the show is over on Friday night uh, so that they can sleep through the night. I think it's, what, I think they said like three and a half, four hours, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Uh, so that they can be here in time for the early weigh-ins. Uh, so there's going to be some super, super tired European media. Um, give me give me your thought process. Why did you end up coming here versus doing the Bellator show? Did you weigh out the options? What, what, what was your plan? Uh, well, to be completely honest, I didn't really have that much of a say in the matter. Uh, we got our, our guy, Jim Edwards, who uh, is uh, work, who was based in London, and then it was just seemed like logistically easier to uh, have him in London and then have, have him send me to Liverpool to uh, – cover the rest but uh it it does feel weird i mean it's like walking into the, the open workouts it's like i don't know there was like more ufc personnel standing around than actual media members and the few ones standing around i recognize this one guy this john john morgan guy and aside from that <laughs> basically nobody I've seen that guy I've seen that guy i yeah. see that guy's blue blue uh, shirt he's, every he's event. been around <laughs> he's been around so usc fight night 130 it is uh it, it is an interesting start to the week bell tour 200 of course is happening uh basically a, a few hours from now or it's kind of it's kind of late on thursday night early friday morning right yeah. now uh i'm sure we'll be catching that one on tv tomorrow night uh won't talk a lot about bell tour 200 just because we're not there, so we don't have much insight to it. Uh, and besides, by the time people listen, this the damn the damn card will be happening already. So let's talk about USC Fight Night 130. Uh, kind of a kind of a wild start to this card to begin with, right? I mean, this was originally supposed to be in Dublin. Um, I will say that I actually had already booked hotel, I had booked airfare, I had everything done for Dublin. My wife went to a school in Dublin for a summer, so it's like one of her favorite cities on earth. She was ready to take a little vacation, so we had already booked everything up, and then uh, and then the change was made, and then mm -hmm. the card was moved to Liverpool, and, uh, you know, nothing against the fine city of Liverpool. This is my first time here, but when I asked my wife if she'd like to go there instead, she was just <laughs> like, nah. Liver what? Yeah, and <laughs> she was like, well, what, well, and then she came back, and she was like, well, what's it like? I'm like, I don't know. I've never been there. First of all, I told her it's, it's probably cold because it's way up in the north, because, you know, like when you go to Scotland, like it seems like no matter what yeah. time of year it is, it's cold, right? So I told her, I was like, well, it's probably going to be cold. It's literally like the warmest week on record in the history of Liverpool. Like, it's gorgeous outside. It's like 75 degrees every day. Although it actually feels kind of hot because the humidity and there's no yeah. damn air conditioner anywhere because they don't. They don't believe in that stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we ended up here in Liverpool instead. And, you know, of course, it was centered around Darren Till. I mean, that's why yeah. everything is here. Echo Arena, card sold out in an hour. You know, they, they, it's crazy how, how fast it sold out. Um, and then it ended up being this amazing sports weekend for the city of Liverpool, right? Because Liverpool advanced all the way to the championship game of the Champions League. Uh, you know, basically, other than a World Cup final, it's the, it's the biggest soccer game on earth, right? I mean, yeah. this is the best leagues, the best players from around the world. Uh, they're playing Real Madrid uh, on, on Saturday night. Uh, it's actually happening in uh, Ukraine. Uh, but, of course, the city here is excited. And uh, I will say, at first, I was really pumped up about, like, maybe going out and sneaking out to a pub or something and watching a game. But now I'm thinking, like, maybe that's not the wisest idea. Like, maybe we should just kind of hold up in the hotel Everyone's been deterring us from it. I mean, it's yeah. almost like, oh, yeah, there's going to be a zombie apocalypse between the hours of, you know, like, 8 and whenever party stops. Uh, everyone's been more kind of like, yeah, be sure to stay clear. It's going to be loud. It's going to be messy. It's going to be sticky. 
So, yeah, maybe the, the safety of our of our, our apartment is better. I'm interested to see it. I will say the city of Liverpool, first time here, the people here are cool. I mean, the people oh, yeah. are really cool. It's People are super friendly, man. Like, you know, the taxi drivers, the Uber drivers, they all talk to you. People on the streets will say – I mean, it's just – it's, to me, this has like a really unique feel, and people keep talking about the yeah. atmosphere that we're going to have in the arena on Sunday, and I'm curious to see it, but just, I mean, I've literally only been here a little more than 24 hours at this point, and yeah. I feel like I've been working damn near all 24 hours of it, uh, but the, everybody that I've come in contact with has seemed really cool here. Yeah, I mean, but let's be real though. How much of our, uh, of what they say can we actually understand? That's a completely different question. They sound very nice, they sound very polite, but oh my god. God, I have to ask for direction three times today for the same place. The Scouser accent, if they don't do you a favor and slow down a little bit and, and basically kind of enunciate for you, it is, it's is—it's tough to understand. Oh, you get the word like, ugh, and it's like, that, that's that's not part of your dialect. Come on. I wish I could give a, a fake Scouser accent. I wish we had cold coffee because he's fearless. Like, he would just go <laughs> for it. He would just go for it. I uh, I will not embarrass myself no, like I, that. No, I, I can't even touch it like not with, not with 10 football it's, I'm not talented enough in anything to do that so. I'm anxious to see because I remember when we were in Scotland you know uh, t- tough to understand you know in Scotland sometimes you know Northern Ireland mm. but especially once you get a few cocktails in them oh yeah then it gets damn near impossible oh, okay. so I'm kind of anxious to see you on Saturday night because you know everybody's going to be drinking in this town to watch that game you know whether they're winning or losing whatever happens everybody's going to be hammered drinking and and I think it's going to be a little difficult. To I want to. I I'm just trying to imagine Darren Till at the after party and just like <laughs> try. You know, some poor ass reporter trying to get this. You know, post uh, po- or potential post win celebration interview from him. I mean, just like being completely clueless and standing there like a giant question mark. Just oh, totally. Like, just <laughs> just kind of listen. And, yeah. and and you can't follow up whatsoever. And then you know you don't have a quote for the for the for the article of the day after. Just like interview with Darren Till after his victory. <laughs> It's, uh, I think. I think. I think is what they said. <laughs> I used to have that problem. Ross Pearson, uh, before he moved to California, mm. I had trouble understanding him. Terry Edom back in the day. Oh, I yeah. mean, it was just – I remember like you, you, I would ask them questions, but I couldn't ask them follow-up questions because yeah. I really didn't understand until I went back and listened to it on tape. You uh, probably haven't ta- talked to him because he's like smaller, but there's a Scottish fighter, Alan Love. Okay. Uh, who is competing in, in, in amongst other things like some Swedish promotions? Uh, uh, I think uh, Heroes FC Superior Challenge stuff like that. I swear to God, I did a, a post-fight interview with him, and I was just like, I just n- couldn't say anything to what he had told <laughs> me. Just like, okay, I'm gonna assume you didn't talk about the submission part, so I'm gonna like, it, it was just guessing. I was just completely guessing, and people even wrote in the comments like, oh, you can tell Sebastian doesn't understand anything this oh, guy's they saying. Called you out. Oh, they called me out because like they could see my face, and it was just like, it, I'm for, it was one of those unfortunate cases where it's a side by side interview, so they can just see like my the, the wheels turning in my head, just <laughs> desperately trying to grasp what this guy's saying, and. Uh, and how much I failed at it. Oh, uh, that's fantastic. So that that is the danger of working up here in northern yeah. uh, northern England. So it's going to be interesting because uh, so not a lot of media here to cover everything because a lot of people are at the Bell Tour show. But uh, should say that doesn't mean there were no fans. We did the open workouts today. Uh, Dan Hardy announced that there were around two thousand people in there, and it looked every bit of it, man. There were oh, a ton yeah. of people in there. They were they were super super loud. I did think it was really cool though because of course they supported the hell out of out of Darren Till, but. You know, when Wonder Boy was out there, Stephen Thompson, uh, the, you know, yeah, there were a couple boos, but there were some cheers as well. You know, they, they did take pictures with him. I don't know. Yeah. It, it felt like, it felt like uh, you know, that they're definitely supporting their guy, but it's not at the expense of like, and, you know, we're screaming, uh, you're going to die to the, to, to, yeah. to, to the foreigners. You know what I mean? It's, it, I don't know. It feels like a kind of a more like sporting type environment. I definitely get that impression. I mean, I have been here once before for uh, Cage Warriors. Uh, don't remember which number it was, but uh, uh, it was uh, just slight. Just that was a fight that got Danny Roberts to the UFC. Okay, uh, he knocked out Jim Wallhead, and uh, I just remember the atmosphere being really, really great. Uh, we weren't out in the city of that much event because we were based in a hotel, like sort of out by the harbor, like the fighter hotels, so, and it was just we just kind of basically stayed near that area for most of the time. But my biggest takeaway was just like everyone was really cool, everyone was really chill. Uh, you know, hard to understand, but you know, when you did, it was usually something nice and polite. Uh, but the the atmosphere in the arena was, I mean, just bonkers. I mean, it was so much louder than when uh, than when we were, when we were at Cage Warriors uh, Super Saturday, where they did the the two main cards. 
Uh, it was, and that was in London. Yeah, exactly. And that's in London. So, you know, you'd expect, you know, you know, they have a possibility for just, I mean, statistically a larger turnout for, and I think they did as well. But just there was just something about that Scouser mentality that just seethed through everything. And uh, uh, it was a great show. And I, I'm, I mean, ju- judging by the open way uh, or the open workouts, I think the largest open workouts in terms of turnout I've ever been to. Uh, yeah, I mean, other than like a other than like a, a Connor or a Ronda or something yeah, like yeah. that. I mean, those those are, but those are outliers. It was yeah. definitely one of the most attended, and definitely one of the most attended I've been to in a long time. I was talking to Dan Hardy today, and of course, Dan Hardy does Cage Warriors broadcast, mm-hmm. and he talked about doing a broadcast in Echo Arena, same arena we're going to be in. Um, and I don't know if it was the same card you're talking about or not, but Patty Pimblett was on it, and he said, you know, Patty won. And I guess, like, I mean, the place went nuts, right? Like, and, and they started, like, jumping the barriers, and, like, the barriers got knocked over. And, like, <laughs> their set that they were on, like, the lights got knocked over. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, everybody was like, what? You know, they kind of noticed what happened. You know, they went crazy, and then they noticed, like, oh, my God, we're, we're you know, this is kind of, like, turning into something bad. And they all just stopped. <laughs> and then, like, set the barriers back up, set the lights back up. And we're like, oh, sorry about that. You know, they and they kind of, like, reset everything. So, like, they're crazy, over the top, like, passionate, but also very, like, as we said, like, friendly. And, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. You know, apologize. So they went from office worker to football hooligan and then back to office worker <laughs> Just like in the that. span of, like, one event. I, I, I'm excited for it. I, I You know, I, I want to see this atmosphere. Everybody's been talking about it, that it's going to be very double nasty. It's going to mm-hmm. be very, you know, Connor versus Brandau-esque. And, and that's a lot to put on i will say this this is this is what i've noticed this week is that uh darren till is definitely a star here oh yeah but he's not as big of a star as like molly mccann yeah you know right? what i mean yeah. it's it's the local people that were on the cage now of course darren till came up here and, and 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 what we've been told is that liverpool embraces their own you know when one of their own does well they embrace him but remember he left for a while and he went to brazil and you know he, he wasn't fighting here so he wasn't in front of them he wasn't out hanging out in the community like Patty Pimblett is yeah. a huge star here. Molly McCann, huge star here. Um, and, and I had heard people tell me that, but until you see it firsthand, it's kind of hard to believe. Like, what, what do you mean Molly McCann's a bigger star here yeah. than Darren Till is? <laughs> but it's true. And, and, and again, you know, not that he's not receiving the love, not that they don't believe him, but, you know, those were fighters, again, that, that were here in the community, that were here, you know, fighting at Cage Warriors. I've, I've been in two Ubers so far. Um, both Ubers I've been in, and you were in one with me, mm-hmm. knew about Cage Warriors. And both yeah. of them and, – and here's the weird thing is both of them said to me, I'm not really a fight fan, you know, but I know about Cage Warriors, and I know about, you know, this person or that person. And I was like, that is amazing. So, I mean, it does seem like MMA is really taking root here. But I will say, Darren Till isn't maybe as big of a star here as I thought he was – but I think if he wins, he's obviously oh, he's instantly yeah. going to surpass them because this is the first UFC. He's the headliner. He's facing you know a former title challenger in the UFC. So they're definitely supporting him, you know. But of course, the MMA fans, the people that are showing up to open workouts, they know Darren Till, you know. But it's the you know the outliers in the community that that aren't the fans. It's weird to me. They know those other people, so it's almost like they're a little bit more well known. It's it's, it's interesting. It's well, interesting dynamic. It's almost like a cultural uh, a cultural difference there, because uh, I mean, taking Cage Warriors is, is a great example uh, because uh, they debuted in uh, my home country of Sweden not too long ago. They came to Gothenburg uh, for a first uh, yeah for a first Cage Warriors card there, and I was talking to their matchmaker, uh, and he was telling me about sort of like how they build up the cars differently depending on on which market they're at and how he was talking about how uh and and to a large extent i would agree how in uh, in terms of like swedish fans they are in general more interested in seeing bigger fights not necessarily a guy from their hometown right. i mean obviously everybody loves gustafsson because he's you know he's he's surpassed the level but of he's Gustav- the combination of both he's exactly. the hometown guy and the superstar exactly um, uh Whereas, you know, there was a not too long ago when uh, uh, Akira Kurosani was going to fight mm. Korean Zombie, or that was a fight that was announced, and everyone was super hyped up about it, mostly because of Korean Zombie. And then he got injured and then replaced by, I think it was Holloway. It was a long time ago. A while. So, yeah, I, f- I think it was Holloway anyway. Uh, no, or maybe Sam. Uh, either way, it was a fight where Kurosani uh, lost. and it w- Cecilia, maybe. Yeah, it might be Cecilia. 
Uh, but either way, and but more Swedish fans were excited about you know seeing Korean Zombie as opposed to seeing That's one of their own uh, fighting. And you know Ian Dean, he said that like yeah, when you know when we go to Liverpool, everyone wants to see Paddy Pimley. You know, it doesn't matter if we put a big star of our cage where his champion, they want to see their own guy. Yeah, and it's just it's very telling and interesting. Like you know you got you know countries not too far away, but with completely different mindsets in terms of what they want to see and you know, what to them makes a good MMA card. That is interesting. Well, it's gonna be madness this weekend. Uh, we're staying at. An Airbnb here that we got. We're right in a nice part of town here. There's a big shopping center called Liverpool One. Uh, the, the the lady who owns this property. Uh, well, I should say first of all, I had to get an Airbnb because the hotels were just ridiculously expensive. Oh God, yeah. Uh, and uh, but the lady that owned this property, she's like, hey, uh, just to let you know, Saturday night, if if Liverpool wins, it's going to be a little crazy on the streets, and you probably won't be able to sleep at night because they'll be partying all night long. I'm like. We'll, we'll get ready for it. And here's what's bizarre, too. You know, the game is in uh, is in the Ukraine. Uh, but I was told if they win, if Liverpool wins on Saturday night, they're going to have a victory parade on Sunday Yeah, that goes right by the arena. So it could get really messy. I don't – I mean, Monday is a holiday here. It's a bank holiday. Uh, I, I, but I guess they were saying that, you know, basically, you know, everybody on the clubs – has international duties that the guy get to and get to the World Cup. So if they're going to do a parade, they, they have to do it on Sunday instead of waiting till Monday. And the parade route goes right by the arena, oh, yeah. right when the first fights are starting. So uh, I, I don't know. It could it could be crazy. I mean, I just hope there's not any disputes about who has whose tickets and stuff like oh, that geez. because that's, that's the last thing we would need. But, I mean, I, I heard UFC personnel, like, warning UFC fighters, oh, just so you know, we might have a little bit of – yeah, a bit of a problem getting to the arena. We're gonna sort it out. We're not sure how, but I mean, the fact that we're going out with these like warnings are like, yeah, this this city is gonna erupt if they win. Just, just to, and just to explain, I guess, kind of to put it in perspective, like how kind of mad the city is right now. And it's not because of just the, the soccer game, of course. I mean, that that didn't really bring people into town. Um, there was a bunch of other stuff going on as well. Uh, there's like a you know a, a wine festival, some convention. I mean, there's like a whole bunch of things going on. Um, and of course, the UFC was kind of late getting here because yeah. originally they, they thought they were going to be in Dublin. Uh, but the UFC staff, fighters, personnel, and everything are spread across four different hotels. I've never heard of that before. Never heard of that. So Ever. that should explain kind of how crazy the city is already. Yeah. That they couldn't even get enough space in one hotel or two hotels or three hotels. <laughs> you know, they had to go to four hotels. Well, I mean, the, the reason that we're kind of crashing here tonight is because we couldn't find a, a, a decently priced hotel in the city. So we got put in this weird-ass crack hostel <laughs> You know, a little bit outside of town. Well, I wasn't going to put you on blast, but this was going to be a solo road show yeah. since I was here by myself. But we got a late house guest because you were stuck in a crack house. Exactly. And, uh, you know, we would have braved it. And, you know, just, you know, one of us, you know, take, you know, we sleep in shifts. One of them, one of us uh, sleeps, you know, sits by the door of a baseball bat just in case. Uh, but, I mean, that's just, yeah, that's the extent of how hard it is to get a hotel in this town. Now. Yep. Just for so, I mean, we got wine, martial arts, and football. I guess that's that's what you need to <laughs> book the entire city of Liverpool. And then you get stuck in a crack house. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this main event. Darren Till versus Steven Thompson, Wonder Boy. Um, I'm intrigued by this, you know, and it's funny because, uh, you know, stylistically, it seems like it's going to be fun, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. two striking first fighters, and not only just strikers, but very creative, very talented strikers. Um, of course, Wonder Boy, just in a, a style unto his own, very unique in the way he moves. Um, it, you know, Darren's a, a little bit more traditional in the way that he strikes, but his power is just is something to behold, man. That that big left hand, dude, when it lands, it's nasty. Uh, and of course, he leads with kicks a lot as well. It's it's fun. I, I go back and forth on this because, you know, Darren Till, the confidence that he walks around with. Yeah. I say this a lot about people and, and fighting, especially. I mean, you see guys that you can tell they're trying to hype themselves up, like they're trying to make themselves believe, like they're practicing some sort of, you know, positive energy that their psychologist told them yeah. to, to reaffirm themselves with. And then you see guys who really believe they're the best in the world. And Darren Till is that guy. I mean, the way he walks around, the way he carries himself, the things he says, he's not bullshit. You know, the he guys that the it. sports psychologists look at to get what they write in her books <laughs> like, to be tell. like that guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. So, uh, uh, you know, he wanted a ranked fighter, right? I mean, uh, you know, the, the win over Cowboy Cerrone, it's, it's interesting, right? Because you can either look at that win over Cowboy Cerrone and you can, and you can lift it up and you can say, man, you know, Cowboy – legend of the sport, you know, one of the greatest to ever do this. Yes, he's never been a champion, but, you know, who doesn't love Cowboy? And, man, he just went out there and manhandled him, right? Or you can go, 
I mean, Cowboy was on a losing streak. He's really, he's really a lightweight that was that was fighting up at welterweight. Didn't even know what he was getting into. So I mean, you can, you you know, that's his biggest win to date, and you can build it up or you can write it off. So that's interesting. Still, he gets the ranked opponent right. And on the one hand, I think you can say for Darren, this is the best possible matchup for him. Right? Like if you're gonna fight one of the ranked guys, you know, the top guys in the welterweight division, this might be the best matchup on paper because it's a oh, yeah. guy that that will strike with him that'll probably play his game, right? But you can also look at it as bad because, you know, this is a guy that maybe does what you do a little better, a little more seasoned, a little bit more refined, a little bit more experienced. And so I'll tell you what, man, I've been going back and forth because, you know, you look at the intangibles, again, the confidence that he walks around with, and then you think about the energy that's going to be in the crowd, like that's going to be amazing. Or could the energy be a drawback? Could he feel pressure to put on a show? Could he could he go and make mistakes? You know, could he go and overcommit and do something he shouldn't do? There's just so many ways to look at this fight that I, I'm so torn. I feel like one day I, I feel like the smart pick. Like if you're just literally taking the intangibles out of the equation, taking emotion, taking like I feel like the right play is to say, well. I mean, Wonder Boy. The guy's the guy's gone. You know, ten rounds with the champ. He's you know. I mean, he's he's got it's all the safe experience. pick. I mean, it is right. Or do you pull the trigger on on Darren Till? It's a it's a fun fight to break down. I tell you this: you're a betting man. You put some money on Till. That's for damn sure. Uh, the way I see it, uh, I'm also very split on it. I think it's a very close fight. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure on what the odds are like uh, right now. I mean, they've been going I think up they, and down. Be, yeah, because they I think Till right? started as an underdog. And then has been shifting. To, I think the money's been coming in on it. He's yeah, shifting I towards a so favorite. It's, it's damn near a pick him right now. Yeah, I, and that's it's rightfully I'd like so. to pull it up here, but the, let's be honest. The, the internet in England sucks. I will say yeah. that. God bless England. It's an amazing country <laughs> with amazing people. But you've been here for a couple thousand years. Can you get some internet that works? I'm going to blame the really weird-ass oversized uh, power outlets uh, and plugs. <laughs> uh, it just, otherwise, just, otherwise, I'd just pull the odds. right? If I was at home, if I was yeah. in the States, if, if I was in Sweden, I'd, I'd use yeah. my very fast internet connection and just pull the odds right up. No, but I, I remember also seeing something similar to what you're saying that the odds started even evening out a little bit uh, the closer to the fight we're getting and I, I don't know it, I'd say that if you're jumping on on, on the Darren Till train well, I mean, choo choo motherfuckers because I do not blame anybody for that uh, God bless he's got all the, yeah <laughs> he's got yeah, I mean he's got all the reason in the world to, to believe in himself I mean the way I see it if you look at his individual performances I feel like you can see a little bit of a difference because there is definitely some some there are some questions to ask about his performance against Cowboy. Uh, how motivated was Cowboy? Did he underestimate Dar- Darren Till? Probably. Mm-hmm. Pr- probably. But at the same time, I feel that if you look at Darren Till in each performance, like when when he fight, uh, fought uh, Boyan Velikovic, it, it was kind of like he was toying with mm-hmm. him. I mean, I remember this sequence where Boyan was sort of like waving him in to try and like, oh yeah, let's get this fight going. And the first thing Darren Till does, it just drops him. Mm-hmm. Uh and that's because that's the one point where he like really went to 100%. I feel like his fights against Justin Ayari and, and Boyan Velikovic, I feel like he probably could have finished them, but he wasn't really pushing that same intensity. I remember thinking that in, I remember thinking that in both those fights like, you know, when you when you see the 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 predator, you know, kind of toying with his prey. Yeah. But will that cost him? Is that a mistake? You know, I remember thinking that in both in those fights. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I think that in his debut, uh to some extent in his fight against Dolby I and mean, then definitely in uh, his fight against Cowboy, he had this sort of this fire in him, mm-hmm. uh, which really showed in his performance. Uh, and I definitely think he's going to be bringing that, which is why it's so much of a closer fight than I think, yeah. The intensity, man. You know, we, we saw the open workouts just a couple hours ago, and, uh, you know, I encourage people, to, uh, you know, to, to go. We've got it up on YouTube. You can watch the open workouts. I'm not the most skilled videographer in the world, but, you know, I, I – I, Kept it wide and I shot it. And it, man, just the, the 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 power and the aggression that he brings, man. Yeah, just the way he hits pads, oh. it's like he's, he's scaring it's me. Well, right? I was I was like taking pictures of him and, and just like the way that he screams when he every single strike. I'm like, oh Jesus Christ! It's intense. Yeah, it's intense. And there's no way he's not going to be fired up in this moment. Oh yeah. You know this this is his moment. This is that breakout moment. So uh, I'm I, you know I, I'm excited for. It. There's questions. But I, I do feel like this is setting up for Darren Till to, to, to have a special performance. Dana White is flying over. Yeah. I mean, how crazy is that? Now, you know, it sounds like there's going to be a meeting with Connor, and, and that probably 
maybe that helped facilitate the, the idea that he should come over here. But, you know, Dana likes to come over to these kind of special cars that are in somebody's backyards. I mean, mm-hmm. again, it's very rem- – and you hate to compare people to Conor McGregor. I mean, you, you do just because that that's on another, you know, level. And, and But it does have that feeling, you know, like this is the, the breakout moment. This is the, the hometown, you know, the, the, the opportunity to blow up. And, again, we've been hearing how special the atmosphere is going to be. And then for Dana White to come over. And then, you know, I talked to Darren the other day, and, and he even said, like, you know what does that show you? If the boss is heading over, what does yeah. that show you? So that's good. All right, so let's do this. Uh, I, I, like I said, I sat down with uh, with Darren Till a little bit earlier today, and uh, again, I think the confidence is there. We, we talked a little bit about the whole fight and how you've seen things play out, and uh, let's just listen to that real quick, and, and you guys see if you're uh, if you're picking up on that same level of confidence that uh, that we are. All right, Darren. Well, it feels like we've been we've been talking about the possibility of you fighting here in Liverpool. You know, especially since the Cowboy fight, it's been so long. I mean, now that the moment's here, give me an idea. What, what, what's the emotion like for you? Uh, I'm just I'm, I'm quite emotional and, and, and excited because uh, you know I've worked a lot a lot of years, a, a lot of hard work went into this and for this to happen. And it wasn't only me that you know made to happen. Uh, the city of Liverpool, you know, the, the fighters that have come out of here at recent times, if I can just spring one off comes to mind, is Terry Etten, you know, he's like an idol. So it's been a long time coming. It's never happened before, and I, you know, I'm the guy to main event. So history comes to mind every time I think of this 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 Sunday. Yeah, it's fantastic. I think with all the excitement, I think there's some drawbacks too, though, right? I mean, uh, a lot of media that you got to do, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure you're getting ticket requests and, <laughs> and things like that. So, yeah. I mean, are the headaches that come along with it, has, has that been a, a drawback at all? They really are, to be totally honest with you. Uh, it, it, you got to find that balance because there's people that will message you for tickets and there's, there's that been that many. I can't reply to everyone, but, you know, I just... Any time a reply or whatever, just say, listen, you know, it doesn't work like that. People think it's like boxing, you, you get like 100 tickets or what, and it's not. So I've just tried to please everyone, but some things that people don't know is in the sport, you've got to be selfish. You, you know, you're going to lose friends along the way. You're going to you're gonna fall out with y- your family. You're going to have arguments with your girlfriend. That, that, that type of stuff's part of it. Not many people understand, so, you know, it is a very selfish sport as well. So, uh, these past few weeks, months, I've had to be very selfish. I don't really care about anyone. I've, I've FaceTimed my daughter less. I've given less attention to people. All my attention's just been in the gym because at the end of the day, it's me that goes out there on Sunday. And if I lose, everyone's going to jump on that little bandwagon and say that I'm, I'm a piece of shit. So, I've got to be very selfish. Yeah. You know, I'm uh, excited for the atmosphere. Like you said, never had a UFC here, and everybody keeps telling me, John, you're not going to believe it. It's going to be unbelievable. So what, what is it about the, the Liverpool people, the, the Liverpool crowd, that's, that's going to make this night so crazy? It was just special. It just got, like, special something in the water. <laughs> Vodka in the water or something. It's, it's very – it's just the special people. They, when they see, so, like, a rise, you know, like myself, Tony Bell, Terry Etham, all the boxers that have come from here, they, they really get behind, and it's not just about – Go into the event and you know oh they, they go to the event they, they get drunk they cheer they chant they scream and they, they put everything all their hundred percent of their voices in into that and so it's going to be very electric and because of how small it is I just think that the atmosphere is going to be wild that Dane is coming so it speaks he knows what's going to happen you know he when was the last time he was in England for a, for a fight night not only you know it's not even pay per view it's just a fight night so it speaks volumes this fight. No doubt. Let's talk about the matchup itself, okay? Obviously, stylistically, it looks like to me a lot of fun. But for Wonder Boy, you know, to I want to say almost take a chance, right? I mean, he's fought for a title. He's been there. So for him to say, yeah, I'll fight you, a low-ranked guy, I mean, do you have a little bit of respect for him? Is there part of you that says, hey, man, thank you for this opportunity? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's exactly the cowboy position. Listen, no matter what happens, I respect me, my opponents, who, whoever they are. Uh, as I said, it's, it takes a... Sp- special type of person to jump in that octagon and and for me it's total respect but just because I'm saying I'm going to go out there and knock him out doesn't mean I don't respect the guy listen I'm in the gym and, and I try to hate my, my friends and teammates in the gym as, as, as much as in a fight so it's all respect with me but at the end of the day if he's going to go in there with the same mentality and he wants he wants to show me that he, there's a reason why he's number one and you know this and that. So for me, I just I just want to go in there and prove to him that don't underestimate me like you do, and you know don't be thinking that it's just some fight that you've had to take to stay at number one. Because I'm I'm not I'm not that opponent. I'm not just someone who's arrived at the UFC to to be another name. I've arrived to be the greatest, and you know what I mean. I fully believe that. 
stylistically, this looks like a lot of fun, right? But what do you see as far as, you know, the differences between you guys? Because I think from, from a fan's point of view, they say, you know, two strikers, you know, it, yeah. it's going to be fun. But, but what do you see as the differences? Yeah, that's just fans. That's a, fans with opinions on that. But when you really look into it, well, you know, I, I see so many, uh, so many positives to Steven. And negatives, and I also have my positives and my negatives. I'm, I'm not perfect, and I want to learn every day, and that's what I do. But, you know, Stephen's a lot like myself. He likes to keep distance. It, it, his front leg, he stands side on. His front leg's like a jab, so I'm using my jab. His kick's like a jab, and it's very powerful. You see he knocks guys down with it in his last fight. Mazda, he kept knocking them down. Uh, I, I think for the first round, I mean, I can, I've visualised the knockout in the first round. I just think it's just going to be a bit of a chess match. Who, who hits first? Who, who's willing to risk this, that? And Stephen believes I'm going to be a very aggressive fighter, but I'm not that fighter at all. <laughs> just because I came out and, and staunched Cowboy in the first round doesn't mean I'm that kind of fighter. You know, uh, he's going to get a, he's going to get a surprise, and, and, and I just think I've got a little bit more than him in, in my head. It's not about physical or who, who punches hard, I think it's all about the, here with that fight and I think I've got a little bit more, as much as he is 10 years older than me, I just know I've got something in here more than him. See that's interesting to me because here, here's what we've been thinking about is, you know, coming into this fight, you know, he's been in some fights that are very patient, very kind of slow, may, maybe even a little bit boring at times. You're the hometown guy with the crazy Liverpool yeah. crowd. Like, you know, if the crowd starts to get a little bit restless because you're playing a chess match out there, I, I mean, are you worried at all that that could factor in? Like, you feel pressure, like, hey, I, I know this is my town. I got to put on a show. No, because the, the type of fight me and Steven will have is, is a fight that fans will appreciate no matter what. If, if this does turn into five rounds of tippy tapping, which it won't because I don't tippy tap. When I throw a punch, I try to fucking put your hole in someone's face. So. There's a difference, but if this does turn into a five round, you know, technical battle, it will be an appreci appreciated fight, you know what I mean, no matter what happens. So, the only thing that can happen is I lie on top of him for five rounds or he does that to me. So, fucking, I hope he doesn't try and take me down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you talked about I mean, the years of dedication that you've put in, but to the fans, it's been like this meteoric rise, you know, because it's yeah. been this last year or so that yeah. you've really come to the forefront. But, I mean, do, do you feel like this is all happening very quickly or do you feel like, no, like it, it's happening because now's my time? Uh, I think everyone has the right time for things. I think this this potentially could be my time. I've had setbacks, you know what I mean? I, I had a lot of time off since me, me second fight in the FC. But the thing is, if you would have asked me at 19, could I beat Stephen Thompson or Tyron Woodley, I would have told you, yeah. And I would have went out there and beat them. So it's not like a rise where, you know, I'm ready for the big time. I, I'll be honest, I've spoken with my coach. I, you know, as much as Stephen is number one in the world, I, I don't see it as my hardest fight. I, I just don't. I just I don't look at Stephen as the number one or as this great guy who never lost in, in karate or kickboxing. I just see Stephen as another opponent. And, 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 and I am better. I, I truly believe I am better than him. Have you sized him up? We, uh, we didn't get to see you at the 25th anniversary yeah. press conference, right? So we didn't get to see the, the face-off. I mean, have you, have you seen him this week? And kind of I've seen him twice. I've just seen him before I came in here. He, he, he looks, he's tall. He's not, he's not as big as me. Like, right now I'm cutting weight, but come fight night, I'm going be, gonna to be fucking huge. So I don't think, as much as, because I've put that in people's minds. I've said, oh, I've, how big I am and that, but... It doesn't. It certainly doesn't play a lot in into the fight. You know what I mean? It, Stephen's not worried how big I am, and I'm not worried how big Stephen is. It, it's it's not that type of fight. Who's the biggest? Who's the strongest? Who's who can throw the wildest punch? It's as I, as I told you, it's going to be more of a, a mental fight. This and he is ten years older. He's 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 well more lived in life than me. You know, he's he's been through probably well more. He's ten years older. I have to respect that. But still, I just got that little bit. Even if it's that much, I've got a little bit more than him. I know I have. I know ultimately your goal is to be the greatest of all time, but do you think about where a win puts you? I mean, do you have the map out of, of, of where you go from here? Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, listen, I'm not begging for a title shot. Uh, a lot of these guys want like a quick route to get the title and then you know, sit back and say, oh, well, I was a champion. I don't want that type of shit in my life. I want to sit back and say, I was the fucking greatest ever, you know? So after this fight, if the UFC book me with, with, with a title, a title shot, then, you know, I'll say, oh, yeah, Sam, thank you. But if they say, no, we want you to have one more fight against Usman, Masvidal, Colby, or I know he's fighting for him, but I'll say, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to... This is why I got the fight in Liverpool with the UFC, because I'm a team player. I don't talk shit about the company, and I do what they ask. I don't decline fights. I don't, I don't say I don't want this guy, this guy, I don't want that guy. I, I fight whoever, and it's not about crying to get a title shot or 
crying about the pay. I don't care. I just want to fight and be the greatest. That's the, that's that's all that's in my mind for the next few years. Well, I know this is a big moment, man. I know you've been dreaming of it. Give me an idea. You've touched on it a little bit, but how do you see this fight playing out? When I know you play it through your mind. Yeah, how does I, it go? I do. I go to sleep every night thinking about it. I just, I, I just, honestly, I just don't know why. I just feel right, like right now where I am, I just feel like I can't go past two rounds. And that's no disrespect. And Woodley probably even hits harder than me. And, he, you know, he couldn't get Steven out of there. But I've just been fucking, my combinations and, and, and the way I am with my pressure at the moment, just, I just feel like it's going to be too much. And I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could go five rounds and lose the fight. But Sutton's just telling me that first or second round he's going to be out cold. Right, so that was Darren Till. The man has no problem telling you he wants to be the best in the world. I'm telling you, man, it's uh, it's infectious, man. When it's I'm intense. when I'm it is when I'm around it, I I believe it. I buy into it. Again, we said the smart play is you know the the easy pick is is Wonder Boy, but uh, but there, there's Darren Till. So let's let's talk about Wonder Boy, okay? Uh, spent some time with him today as well. Uh, first of all, it's kind of cool. I got to go to the the Everton grounds. Uh, yeah. Everton for for people that don't know, another Premier League team. Uh, it's basically the the crosstown rival Liverpool. Learned a little bit today. Mm. Everton is actually an older football club than Liverpool is. Oh. Everton was first. They actually played at Anfield, where where uh, Liverpool now calls home. They had a rent dispute. Everton left uh, because they didn't like the, the the rent terms, and they went somewhere else. And the owner of the stadium started a new football club, Liverpool Football Club, and that is is how Liverpool came to be. So. Everton, actually the older club, and uh, Everton actually won a league championship at Anfield before Liverpool played there. So there's it sounds your... like we lost out, though. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, yeah. Now, it, it was funny. It was So it was cool. To me, I am a soccer fan. I know a lot of people you know, aren't Americans especially, but I, I love soccer. Yeah, so me to too. me, anytime I get a chance to go do those things, like it really would have been easier for me to not shoot that today because I'm not a good videographer. Like that's what cold coffee does. That's what Abby does. You yeah. know, they, they follow people around and they figure out the angle. And, you know, basically I just, uh, Averin, who's the, the UFC cameraman who's, who's here, uh, basically just wherever he stood, like I stood, you know, like, <laughs> you know I was like, or sometimes I would go on the exact opposite side. So it was like a mirror effect. Like, you know, like, Oh, I'm doing my own thing. But really I was just copying him from the other uh, oh, side. Oh, it's like when you do your, your book report and you just change some of a, some of a that's it. Sten- sen- sentence structure. One, exactly. <laughs> Switch it up. That's what I was doing. I was cheating yeah. a little bit, uh, but it was fun for me to, to walk around the grounds and to see that. But it was so funny. So you know the, the the football the rivalry here it was great because so Darren Till is a Liverpool guy, right? Mm-hmm. The red team. Everton's the blue team here. Uh, so basically, you know, the USC said, well, we've got you know we've got the natural built in with Darren Till being the Liverpool guy. Hey, let's take Wonder Boy to Everton and you know maybe build some goodwill there or whatever. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And I posted on Twitter and social media. And it was hilarious because, like, half the responses were like, yeah, Wonder Boy, you're my dog. You know, that's awesome. And then the other half was like, F you, Wonder Boy. I hate <laughs> you. Till's going to kick your ass. You know, it'll be just the, the soccer rivalry. So so that was fun. But, um, you know, Wonder Boy was awesome. Uh, I mean, just being a couple days out from the fight, you know, being on, on enemy territory, man, he was – uh, he was in a great mood. He was being incredibly giving to to, to the folks there. Uh, so very cool stuff. He's relaxed. He's in a good mood. Um, and and the other thing is, you know, he says, listen, uh, you know, I know there's been some criticisms of some of my recent performances, but I, you know, I've learned a lot from those. I've, I've focused a lot on those. And uh, you know, he's been respectful until he says that when the the fight was first offered to him, he didn't even know who Darren Till was. Yeah. Um, and, and and he didn't mean it disrespectfully. You know, he, he says it right away. He's like, I'll be honest, I didn't know who he was, but then I went and studied him, and he's awesome. You know, he's a great striker. He's he's good. He's, it's going to be a fun fight. Well, I feel like both of them kind of have a very respectful mentality. Like, even when Darren Till called him out, I mean, he said he said it himself, but it's not like in a disrespectful way. It's just because he saw him as the best striker in the UFC. Yep. I and mean, that's a big honor, obviously, to bestow upon somebody. So I, I definitely feel like it's, it's a mutual sort of like yep. – Respect, but with a little bit of like, I don't know, sports. Co- I don't, I don't sure. know how to put it. Like, there's a little bit of, there's an extra tension there as well, but there's a lot of respect. Well, and, and it was funny. And, and uh, you know, I, I did ask Wonder Boy, I'm like, is there a part of you that kind of wants to just shut everybody up and kind of, uh, you know, kind of, you know, you know that Dana's going to be here, kind of look at Dana and be like, 
what's up, dude? How about that? You know what I mean? So <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll listen to, we'll listen to what, uh, what he had to say in just a few minutes, but, uh, I, I don't know. G- give me your, g- give me your read on, on wonder boy, kind of what you've seen so far, how he's handled himself, what you think about what he's saying, what, what you think about his prep, because I, you know, I did, I did worry a little bit in the same way that like cowboy, I mean, yeah. there is no question that cowboy underestimated Darren until, I mean, he, when he said, I mean, and cowboy doesn't watch any tape. Like that's just who cowboy is. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when I talked to him that week and in Poland, I remember, you know, I'm like, what do you know about this kid? And he's like, oh. he's like, I saw him for the first time today, you know, and I'm like, you can't be serious. Yeah. Like, what? and he's like, what? no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm like, bro, just all right. Let me turn the camera off and like level with me. Like, come on, tell me because I need to know. He's like, nah, I saw him for the first time. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, I, so I worried a little bit. You know, did 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 Wonder Boy not take this as seriously or underestimate him? And also, you know, Wonder Boy said like. You know, I didn't want to take this fight. I was, I was hoping I'd be in a title fight. I was hoping all that. You know, yeah, I was so hoping he would be fighting Dos Anjos. That's it. You know, so you know, would there be motivation issues? Would there be frustration issues? Was he taking a fight he shouldn't have? Because you know, he had the the, the injuries, the thumb injuries, mm-hmm. and all that. So, um, but I, I think he's okay. But I don't know. Give me your read. Yeah, I mean, I do feel like he, he is approaching it from a from a smarter angle. I, I do also do think that just in general as a fighter, I do feel like he is a. I mean, it's always a weird, kind of a weird thing to say that he's a smart fighter because, mm-hmm. I mean, let's face it, I mean, everyone has to have some form of fight IQ to get in a cage with somebody unless, you know, literally your only tactic is to just swing for the bleachers. Uh, but I just do think that Cowboy's just general style of approaching a fight is very different from Wonder Boy's. Uh, I mean, Cowboy, he, I mean, the reason he is so popular, the reason he is a world star is because he has it. I'll fight anyone, anywhere, whatever, just give me my Cowboy hat and my Budweiser, and I'm down. (laughs) And and that's why we love him. That's right. But it's not always a recipe for success. Uh, And he is, I feel like he is very easily sort of influenced by momentum. I feel like the the Nate Diaz fight was also extremely telling very well. I just feel like Diaz just totally got to him so much that he was basically beat before he got him a cage. Yeah. And here, in a sense, where I just felt like where, where Till started off so strong that just Cowboy had no hope of ever getting into a fight again. Right. Uh, Wonder Boy's not that kind of fighter. Uh, I just do think that his, his fight IQ and just like the, the way he strategizes each opponent and, and approaches each fight uh, as so unique to the previous one. Uh, I, I mean... Yeah, I just don't see it being a, a huge factor. I mean, I, to be honest, I think the most interesting factor is the potential of ground game, mm. uh, because uh, both who, of them who have, shoots first. Yeah, exactly. That, that's <laughs> what I'm. What I'm <laughs> I mean, we know that, that Wonder Boy that he trains with Chris Weidman. Uh, you know, he's got some solid wrestling there. Uh, if you go onto our YouTube channel, you can see Darren Till submitting a black belt in in less than a minute. Wow! In training, yeah, we had a guy there filming. Uh, they were doing some sparring. And yeah, he submitted a BJJ black belt in uh, in about a minute. So maybe a little a little ace up his sleeve. There. Yeah, I've, I've, both of them do, and and it, I think it has just. I mean, it's this fight is being built up as such a striker versus striker fight, which I do think it will be. I mean, obviously, but I mean, there is a when one of them gets rocked, uh, or maybe just for the hell of it, just hell. I'm, sees the opening. Yeah, sees opening, goes for it. Uh, that's also a very interesting thing to see there because everyone's seeing two two strikers compete in an area where we haven't ever really seen them try like right offensively before. Yeah, they may have ended up there, but it wasn't because yeah, they exactly. wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> and that's also a very interesting aspect. I mean, I I do see it as very different in terms of style as well, where I see Wonder Boy is more wrestling based, and I do see. Uh, Till is more BJJ based, and again, it stri- goes to you know karate Muay Thai, and I don't know. Just at the end, it's just it's a really exciting fight just because of her styles. I mean, mostly striking, of course, but there is that extra little spice of grappling that I think we might be save get a little taste of. It is gonna be interesting because I I do think I do think it's gonna be a little more tactical to start out with than I think people are thinking. I don't yeah. think it's necessarily going to be just balls to the wall, you know. Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bonner, yeah. just swinging away. Sanchez you know? Guido. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't think it's going to be that to start with. You know, I think it's going to be a little bit more tactical, a little bit more technical. But I, I do think yeah, I see that. it's uh, I do think it's going to be a fun fight. All right, I did have a chance to sit down with uh, Wonder Boy as well, Stephen Thompson. Of course, always in a good mood. Of course, always smiling. You can you can hear it just in the audio itself. But uh, here's the conversation we had. 
You've been here a couple days now, wandering around a little bit. I see you doing doing a little sightseeing. I wonder what what it's been like. I mean, it's enemy ground for you, but it how is. are people treating you? But you know, I got here. I got here Sunday, and as soon as we stepped off the plane, everybody's been very welcoming, very very nice, taking uh, pictures with fans, and everybody's been great. Of course, I know it's going to be different come Sunday. Obviously, you know, this is Darren Till's hometown, and I am in enemy territory, so to speak. But uh, I, to be honest with you, I'm having a blast, man. I'm having a good time. Have you run across Darren himself yet? He seems like one of those alpha male types, you know what I mean? Have you crossed paths yet? We have crossed paths. I mean, we've, we've actually waved, you know, like across the hall here. We've actually waved to each other. But, uh, no, nah, I haven't really, you know, had, you know, like stared off, you know, or stood off against him. But, uh, yeah, man, we're, we're both ready to rock and roll, I'll tell you that. No doubt. No people are looking forward to this fight. But talk about the process because we didn't think you were going to take this fight, right? I mean, you were injured and – we didn't know if it made sense for you. I mean, you're the top ranked guy that's been there. He's the up and coming guy. So talk about the process of deciding like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in here and take this fight. Yeah. So when I was first approached, actually, the first time I was approached for this fight was was uh, during the week of the Masvidal fight. I had uh, some people ask me, hey, would you fight Darren Till? Of course, I'm like, I didn't really know who Darren Till was at the time. You know, I had to go back and do my research, but I was like, yeah, man, I'll fight anybody. So, uh, you know, after the fight, I was approached and I, at the time, it just didn't make sense. I had just found out I had broken my thumb and torn a ligament in my right thumb. So it didn't make sense for me to take it at the time when they wanted me to fight. It was a little, little, little early. Um, also, I kind of wanted to see where the welterweight division was going. There was rumor, of course, Tyron just had his shoulder surgery. There was rumor about an interim title. I wanted to see where I uh, was at the top of that list or not. Obviously, I'm not. So I want to stay busy, man, and, and um, you know, uh, test myself against these, these guys, these up-and-coming guys, you know, the, the next generation, people are saying. And what better place to do in Liverpool? Never been here, which is another uh, excuse, to, you know, reason I took this fight, because I've never been to the UK. And, um, yeah, man, so that's that. I'm ready to rock and roll. Here we are. Did you feel disrespected at all that you weren't included in that, you know, interim title fight? No, because I, I kind of understand where everybody's coming from. I mean, I did fight the champ twice. First one was controversial, but, you know, it was uh, – even the second one was controversial. Um, you know, some people say I won it. Uh, Dana White thought I won the first one, but it is what it is. And, you know, after that last fight, people didn't want to see it again. So I understand that. So, you know, I think after this, after this fight with a good win over, over Darren Till, it just kind of solidifies my spot to be in that number one contender. Um, after that, it really is up to, you know, who fights Tyron next and what happens then. Uh, you know, whoever wins the fight against RDA and Colby Covington will face Tyron next. And if they beat Tyron, I think I'll get that next shot. If Tyron wins, I may have to fight one more time. So it's kind of up in the air. So um, um, right now, I'm really not focused on that. I'm focused on one guy, and that's Darren Till. So you didn't know about him, but then you went and started doing the research, obviously. You started looking at his fights. What did you think? Tough guy, man. Uh, everybody says he's the big welterweight. Of course, you know when I looked at when I looked at him against Cerrone. Uh, I think every you know just about every welterweight looks bigger than Cerrone. But uh, you know I hear he walks around about 215. No worries. I've, most of my sparring partners walk around about 220. So 225, 230, and uh, no big deal. But he's a Muay Thai stylist, not your average Muay Thai stylist. You know, keeps his hands fairly low. Good counter puncher, also fairly aggressive. He says he's going to put me away in, in, inside two rounds, so that leads me to believe he is going to come out real aggressive. Um, I'm used to that. Most of the guys that I face in this division have been aggressive, so uh, when they do that, they they do tend to run into things. Yeah, no doubt. You talk about that. I mean, I think that's what a lot of people are focused on, the size, right? I mean, you guys are probably about the same height, and I think your reach is honestly pretty similar. He just does seem to be a little thicker. A little thicker, thicker. yes. I mean, does that, does that factor in at all, or do you think that he carries more power because of that? Probably. I think, you know, usually bigger guys carry carries more. There's more weight behind the punches, so to speak. You know, more muscle on the frame. But, you know, that's something I'm used to every day. You know, I'm used to that. Um, he seems like an explosive guy. We'll see, you know, just coming from uh, his fights, but we'll see when we get out there. But then again, you know, I have a very different style than everybody else. You can bring in all the karate fighters in the world, but it's still, it's different when you step out there and you actually feel it, you know, out there in the octagon in real life, you know, my style. So um, that's something he's got he's to adapt to, and if, if he does adapt to it. Um, that's something that we'll see. But, um, yeah, man, it doesn't bother me really that much that he is heavier. I think he's going to be a powerful guy. I really do. And i got to watch out for that left hand. The casual fan, you're the striker versus striker. You know, they say you're similar almost. But when you really break it down, I mean, the, new, the subtle nuances between the, the two of you, I mean, what, what do you see as the biggest differences between you two as fighters? 
Um, we do have some, some similarities, both of us keeping our hands down, uh, being long distance fighters. Uh, he does like to throw elbows, so he likes to cover that gap a little bit, but he doesn't like to stay there a whole lot. He he's kind of moves in and moves right back out. Um, I like to throw more, more kicks than he does. You know, lead leg, my kicks come from different angles. I like to switch sides. He's mostly right side forward fighter. Um, so yeah, we have some similarities. We have some differences as well. So um, it's gonna be, it's, it, I like these kind of fights, to be honest with you. I, I like the strikers. It's very, very few um, strikers that I've faced in the UFC so far. Most of them have been, have been wrestlers or grapplers. Um, uh, I think my last one, uh, Ma Masvidal, I was super excited to take that one because I knew he was a striker. And that's how I kind of looked at it going into this one, man. I'm, I'm excited to go out there, put on a show in front of the fans, and try and figure this guy out. You know what I mean? That's, that's the whole game, is that chess match and trying to figure each other out. You've got such an extensive striking background in addition to mixed martial arts. When you look at his style, I mean, have you ever fought a guy that fought like him? I mean, do you have maybe some experience in your back pocket that's going to help you out? <laughs> you know, I, I, I've been fighting since I was 15 years old, you know. And I think in fighting and sparring guys uh, all over the world, you know, some of the best strikers in the world, Anderson Silva, Leo Tomachita, I've trained with all these guys. And hopefully that will all come down to, you know, this moment and, and, and help me out during this fight. So it does. I think, I think the, you know, a lot of guys kind of stick to one gym, which I, I agree being loyal to that gym, but it's okay to go out and experience other fighters and get used to other styles. Because if you stay with the same sparring partners, you know, you figure them out fairly easy. So, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why I've been to, you know, uh, you know, George St. Pierre's camp up there with Fraz Zahabia TriStar, uh, Ray Longo's gym, uh, Matt Serra's, you know, I've been to ATT, I've been, I've been all over the place, man. Um, you know, to, to get those feels, to get those different looks. So I think, you know, uh, going out there in front of Darren Till, of course he's gonna have something maybe I've never seen before, but maybe, maybe, but it, that's, that's why I'm in the sport. You know, I love, I love to try and figure out people. I love the, the, um, uh, the puzzle. You know, trying to figure out that puzzle, so. You know, knowing that you wanted to be in a title fight, right, to be in an interim title fight, or at least have the idea, when it didn't come, was, was motivation, preparation, was it tough to, to, to kind of get up every day and go to the gym and, and be, you know, as intense as you would be if you were getting ready for a Tyron Woodley or an RDA or a Covington for an interim title fight? You, you know, not at all. Not at all, man. I, I love waking up every day. I love going to the gym, love training. I love the... I love the, the, the focus it gives me, you know? It's when I don't have a fight, when I have a hard time getting up and going to train. You know, but once I have somebody and I have that face kind of in my head of who, I, who my opponent is, it gives me no problem getting up and training every day. And, you know, I don't do this for, uh, for the money or, or it's cool, that, that's, a, that's a bonus. And obviously I want to be champion, you know what I mean? But I like it because I love to compete, man. I love to compete, doesn't matter who it is. I'm, who can say they can fight, fight, they're fighting the best guys in the world. Best guys in, in the entire world, you know? Some of these guys, best who ever lived. So, man, I mean, that's, that's something you can tell your kids, man, your grandkids right there. That's, that's, that's awesome. I know everybody thinks of you as one of the nicest guys in the sport, but obviously you're <laughs> going to be the bad guy on Sunday. I wonder, I mean, is there any part of you that would... A, kind of enjoy coming in and spoiling it for this guy that's the young up-and-comer that everybody's high on right now. And also, we know that Dana's going to be in attendance now as well. I mean, would you enjoy maybe turning to him and being like, you know, Let's go. you put me in here right. and look at what I did. You know what I mean? Is, yeah. there, is there any party that kind of wants to send a message? It does, man. That, that, I mean, just that thing, it, it fires me up, to be honest with you. All right, you know, you guys wanted this fight. You know, you got it. You're gonna you're gonna see the best even with Boy Thompson stepping out there uh, this Sunday. So and yeah, man, it would be cool to go out there. And of course, I know I know I want to be getting the booze, but uh, more importantly is is you know going out there with the W, obviously, but carrying myself as a gentleman as well. So that's 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 more important to me than anything. And uh, but it would be cool to kind of. You know, give Dana that wink, like, hey, you, you wanted it, you know, you got it. That's pretty cool. I don't see any way this fight isn't going to be fun. I mean, every, obviously everybody likes two strikers going at it, but you, you think he's probably going to come out aggressive. I think we all do. You know, do you think it might be wise to, to be a little bit more tactical, a little bit more patient? I mean, maybe it's not quite the fire fight that everybody wants to see right off the bat? That, I mean, that could, all, that could always happen. Now, of course, you can always go out there and think you're going to do something, but when you feel out there, maybe it doesn't feel right. There may be some filling out at first. It really depends on, 
you know, how each other feel as soon as you step out there. You know, we can never predict how the fight's going to start. Is he going to come out aggressive? Is he going to kind of back off a little bit as, as Tyron did? So it could possibly be one of those balls of the wall, you know, f slug fest, you know, just nonstop action. And, and I think I'm prepared for that. I think he's fighting in front of his hometown and he wants to put on a show for everybody. So I think he's going to come out and try and put me away to prove a point. So, and that's what I'm ready for. Right, so that's the other half of your main event. It's a fun one. Uh, glad it came together. You know, we were kind of laughing earlier. I mean, this is one of those fight cards that was really built around Darren Till. I mean, had yeah. Wonder Boy fallen out, they probably could have gotten somebody else and people would have been okay. But, man, had Darren Till dropped off this card, it would have been bad. Uh, it, it, and you know it, what? That I shouldn't been, even probably say it right now. Oh my I mean, God! You know, knock on got, wood. Knock yeah, on wood. We still got we still got a media day to go. But we don't. He could, he could Tony Ferguson himself. Yeah, over exactly. A we, so, so, After the event that must not be named, we <laughs> probably shouldn't have tried like even remotely jinx anything. Uh, we did. All right, let's talk about the co-main event: Neil Magny versus Craig White. Of course, this uh, was not the original scheduled fight. We lost Gunnar Nelson yeah. in the co-main event, which is a hit to the card in terms of name recognition. I don't know that. You know, Gunnar Nelson is a superstar that was selling tickets, but it, oh. it's it's a step down, you know, in terms of, of Let's quality. face it, it ain't his personality that's getting masses in seats. That's so. true. <laughs> it, it, his skill is something else. But, yeah, uh, yeah he's not the, the most charismatic guy on the roster. Uh, but uh, tell me about – I mean, you're, you're familiar with Craig White. I mean, he's, he's, he's yeah. fought up here. Um, I, I, you know, I, I have a hell of a lot of respect for both these guys. I mean, first of all, Craig White, to, to step in on short notice – Against a name and you know a Neil Magny. I mean, not that Neil Magny is a superstar, but like Neil Magny is, is is as tough as they come, right? I mean, he well, is, he's one of those unsung heroes. He's one of those guys. There you that go. He he delivers, and you do not want to fucking fight him. That's but he's it. not necessarily He'll the make biggest you look name, bad, even though he's not the biggest name. Yeah. And then kudos to Neil Magny as well for him to say, "Listen, man, I'm gonna stay on this card, and yeah, you you find me a newcomer that I've never heard of before." And, and you know, he said it today at the open workouts. You know, yeah. like Dan Hardy was asking, "Well, what do you think?" He's like, "Well, I trust Sean Shelby. He's a great matchmaker." And yeah. if he says that's the guy, then that's the guy. You know, I mean, uh, what, such what a awesome Neil Magny answer. Such a Neil Magny answer. But uh, for people maybe that, that, that aren't familiar with Craig White, I mean, uh, a guy that's been around for a while, doesn't have the most impressive record on paper, but seems to be kind of hitting his stride right now. Yeah, well, I mean, he's uh, for those who follow Cage Warriors, he's obviously very experienced there. He's a real, real finisher. Uh, uh, very intense fighting style. Uh, he uh, he overwhelmed um, uh, Håkon Foss, which uh, um, was a Swedish Norwegian fighter trained with uh, Jack Hermansson, uh, who was also kind of a, a bit of an unsung hero in Nordic MMA. It was also not necessarily the best record, but the losses against top competition. Uh, he was overwhelmed by Craig White, uh, which says something for because Foss is a very intense fighter who created the most gruesome cut on I've ever oh. seen on Jack Mason. That was uh, so nasty. It was horror movie. That was just a couple weeks ago. That was yeah, oh. yeah. That was well, yeah. The Cage Warriors debut in, in, in Gothenburg. Mm. Uh, so yeah, Craig White. Uh, for those who have, I mean, I'm pretty sure some of his Cage Warriors fights are free on YouTube right now, mm. or at least some of the highlights. Uh, and it's well worth checking out. He's an exciting fighter. Uh, he brings a lot of intensity to the table. Uh, is that enough to uh, to defeat Neil Magny? Eh, probably not, yeah. but, but, I mean, you never know. I mean, listen, Neil Magny is the pick here, no question about it. You know, the other thing, too, is, you know, Neil Magny's a pro, as you said, man. He, he's, he always fights. He, he's always prepared. I, like, so he's not going to take a guy lightly because he's a late replacement. I mean, that's just not who he is, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't think he's going to overlook anybody. I don't think, you know, uh, it's not like he probably – Quit training and got out of shape. While yeah. looking, you know what I mean. So he went on a cheeseburger diet at the yeah. moment it changed. Dude, yeah. Neil, Neil Magny's the, the play here, but I think you know Craig Craig White's going to come in and try to make it a fight and at least yeah. make it make it entertaining and try to push Neil a little bit. Uh, Arnold Allen versus Maz Brunel. You uh, you were supposed to talk to Maz Brunel earlier, right? But it didn't happen. No, we did. Oh, yeah. you did. You did get Maz. Yeah, it was so, Mach one. We didn't have time. Oh, that's for. right. So uh, give me the give me the feel on this one. I mean, Arnold, Arnold Allen, a guy that's. Uh, Got a lot of potential, and, and Maz Brunel, you know, uh, an impressive record as well. Viking invasion, baby. That's what I'm calling. Uh, Arnold Allen is a, 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 a you know top UK prospect. Fantastic uh, mustache. Oh uh, yeah, or I've I've seen better. Marlon Vera. Oh, Marlon uh, Vera. Well, that's on a different level, bro. Yeah. That's that's on. <laughs> but uh, it's a UK strong mustache. Yeah, yeah, UK strong, definitely. <laughs> uh, definitely, but Arnold Allen. I remember seeing him in Cage Warriors as well. Uh, uh, a very a very solid all-around guy but i just feel like uh, Mads Bonell is just 
just a little too intense and technical. I mean, his grappling style is just so unforgiving. And I've seen him in training uh, give uh, UFC fighters a real hard time. And this was several years before he was in the UFC. Uh, uh, when when fighters were coming out of Rumble Sports and, in, and into the UFC, like, like Niklas Dalby, like when Pani Kansad was doing really, you know, coming up in Cage Warriors, uh, Damir Hadzovic, People were still like, oh yeah, but just wait for Mance Brunel. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously he, he took his UFC debut in, in the wrong weight class against a, a fucking refrigerator of a man uh, and yeah. uh, and couldn't really handle it. And then the bounced back against Mike Santiago. Uh, Arnold Allen, he's had some good performances in the UFC, but uh, like w- with the one we talked about Spinell, and I, I got to kind of agree. I feel like he made a l- loads of mistakes against Amir Khani, mm-hmm. uh, which he will not be able to make against uh, Masbunel. I mean, I really can't stress how, how like tight and technical that's, this guy that's is. That's very fair. That's a very fair assessment. Yeah, so uh, I think it'll be a good fight. Uh, regardless of who wins, we get a top European uh, featherweight prospect. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm predicting Viking invasion. I, I think that's a good fight that, that people it's it's flying under the radar for for non mm-hmm. you know Euros. I saw, but I definitely think that's one to keep an eye on. The other one that, that, that I was really excited about to begin with, uh, Maquan Amir Khani versus Jason Knight. I love this fight on paper when it was first announced. Um, I love both the guys. I yeah. Mean, first of all, just their personalities, their fighting styles. I love both of them. Uh, so I was really excited about. It. But then. I, I, I find out this week they hate each other. They absolutely hate each other, and this is great. So, which we love. This, oh, of course, man. You know, so I was already excited for this fight anyway. But uh, keep an eye on this one. Um, let's we'll see. They will be at the media day tomorrow, so we'll be there. So there will be face-offs. We'll see. I oh, bet yeah. there's going to be a little trash talk there. Uh, I bet the weigh-ins are going to provide a little fireworks. But basically, um, what this stemmed from was uh, McQuan did an interview with Karen Bryant uh, of, of MMA Heat. She does Fox Sports as well, but this was her personal channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and McQuan uh, basically disparaged uh, Jason Knight and, and upset him and uh, – I'll just I'll, we'll put it in Jason's own. I had a chance to talk to Jason, and uh, I won't play the whole interview for you, but I'll, I'll play the little piece right now. The whole interview is up on YouTube. It's up on MMA Junkie as well, but I'll just play the little piece where uh, he explains what his problem is. Let's talk about the matchup with Maquan Amir Khani. I saw you you posted on social media that you know you weren't real pleased with some of the interviews or some of the things he had said. What, what was it that got under your skin a little bit? Ah oh, man, he's a little bitch. You know he uh, he he thinks that he's supposed to go out here and finish me in the first round. He's, you know, he's not giving me no respect at all. He, he said that, uh, you know, the, the lady asked him, what do you think about your opponent, Jason Knight? He said, when I think about Jason Knight, I just think that I'm going to kill him. He said, that's all there is to it. He said, I watched the Ricardo Lamas fight. He said, that's all I needed to see. He says, I'm a better wrestler than him. I'm better than him on the ground. I'm better than him standing up. He said, I will beat him wherever it goes. And then at the end, she asked him, you know, what's your prediction for this fight? He said, I'm just going to punish him. I'm going to make him bleed and mark my words that will not go to a second round. So I promise you, I promise you one damn thing. If it don't go to a second round, it's not going to be because Jason Knight lost. And, uh, you know, I, I seen him yesterday out in the hallway, and uh, he tells me, he said, man, you came a long way for one round. He told me, I said, no, nah, motherfucker, I came a long way to shut your mouth. And he's like, oh, go ahead, you do it now. Shut my mouth now. I said, no, buddy, I'll do it on Sunday. He said, go ahead, try, go ahead, try. I said, put your fucking hands on me, and then I'll try, you know. Excuse the language, but, uh, you know, the dude's kind of got under my skin a little bit, and uh, I'm ready to go out here and just shut his mouth. And I, I just, I just want to make him feel like a little bitch, you know. That's, that's, that's the plan. So it's a little bit of a grudge match right now. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to get, you know, too excited and, and get out of my element, but uh, I'm definitely going to go out here and try to hurt this guy. Hey guys and gals, Cold Coffee here. If you ever shower or brush your teeth, I, I, I figure that you probably do, or try to make your hair look presentable, I've got good news for you. Dollar Shave Club has a lot of stuff to help you out. Dollar Shave Club, yes, that Dollar Shave Club. They deliver everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. You name it, the shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, hair gel, and even a wipe that'll leave your tush feeling tingly clean. Trust me, 
they work. You know, one of the things I really, really like is this amber lavender body cleanser. I'm not a big, like, fragrancy body wash type dude, you know. I mean, I, I do the cleanser. I mean, I, I, I'll use a bar of soap from time to time or I'll use these body cleansers. And I'm telling you, this amber one, I like the smell of it. I mean, the, it, maybe it's the lavender part of it or something, but um, I like it. I like the way it makes the smell, and, and the girl likes it, and, and if she likes it, I'll keep doing it. But that's one of the great things that they have here with these different body products and stuff. You know, not even talking about the shavers with their shavers, the, especially the one that comes with the starter kit is the bomb. But they have so much good stuff, guys. You know, toothpaste, toothbrushes. They got your shower gels. They got your hair creams. They got your skin care. They got your butt wipes. One wipe Charlie's, even though, you know, I've been known to go back for a second one because it feels good. But that's just me. All of Dollar Shave Club's products are made with top shelf ingredients that won't break your budget. You feel the difference, folks. Plus, shipping is included with your membership. And here's a great way to try a bunch of Dollar Shave Club's products. For just five bucks, you can get their daily essential starter set. It comes with body cleanser, one wipe Charlie's, that's their butt wipes, their amazing butt wipes, I should say, their world famous shave butters, and their best razor, the Six Blade Executive. This razor is dope, folks. Keep the blades coming for a few more bucks a month and add in shampoo, toothpaste, or anything else that you need for the bathroom. Check it all out at dollarshaveclub.com slash road. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash road. Get your stuff, folks. All right, so Jason Knight making it very clear what it was that upset him. And then, beef, baby. Shortly after, I had a chance to sit with Maquan Amir Khani as well. And again, that whole interview is up there for your viewing pleasure but uh in the meantime let me just give you his little response jason knight he uh, he took some offense at an interview you did and uh, didn't like some of the things that you had to say i wonder what fuck him i was gonna ask what you think about him fuck him i don't give a fuck if it's a jason or whoever it is i know that the guy that is against me is on my way and i just have to eliminate him so there you go. The makings of a grudge match. I was fired up for this fight already, uh, but now I'm even more pumped. And, and, and again, I think we're going to see some fireworks uh, at the face-offs. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it's going to be a really fun fight. Both guys, very exciting, uh, crowd-friendly fighters. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I think it's definitely an under-the-radar fight, the definition of an under-the-radar fight. I agree. We were supposed to see Manny Bermudez uh, versus Davey Grant. We literally just found Breaking out right news, before we yeah. sat down here. Uh, MMA meat yeah. uh, broke the story. <laughs> As we're beginning to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, Davey Grant had a uh, uh, staph infection. You know, it's funny because... I thought you were going to say he had a curse because that's what it's, it sounds like. I mean, right. Jesus Christ. It's funny because, uh, you know, milling around the hotel today, I was doing, I, was, I mean, it was a super busy day. I did eight different interviews. Uh, I went and did the thing at, at the Everton football grounds. We, we went and had the open workouts. Uh, but milling about, I, I overheard a conversation of just some people. And it was one of those weird conversations where you kind of, like, you're walking down a hall and you run past people. And all I heard was, like, it's gross. I didn't even want to look at it. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, which could, could be a lot of things, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, but then you kind of get that look like, oh, shit, reporter there. You know what I mean? And uh, and then I was like, hmm, I wonder what they were talking about. And then it all became clear. I'm mm -hmm. pretty damn sure that's what I walked up on. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. I'm, I'm I mean, like, let's hope that what it was. Yeah, <laughs> otherwise there is another juicy story or potentially very sticky story out there. Oh, man. Uh, so we lost that. We don't know the new bout order as, as, as of the time that we're recording this. I'm sure by the time we wake up in the morning, uh, they'll have straightened everything out a little bit. There were only two fights on Fight yeah. Pass to begin with, but – uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, Eric Spicy versus Darren Stewart. Uh, I like Eric Spicy, man. He's a Vegas guy, and uh, well, he, he's, I should say he was a Vegas guy. He's moved around a little bit, but uh, he, he has a potential to sneak up. Darren Stewart uh, has, has has had a struggle in the UFC so far. That's to put it mildly. Uh, uh, I, to be honest, I don't really think this is not. I mean, if it's I look at a bad matchup for Stewart, yeah, I mean it's a bad matchup, and uh, it's a bad match for the main card. To be honest, I mean. You you wouldn't see that in in a whole lot of ever markets. It's really just because Darren Stewart is you know a local guy or uh, otherwise. Give I think the UK push. Yeah, versus fighters, uh, versus matches on the Umber card. But I think is all right. So honestly, knowing that we have to knowing that we have to promote one card to the main card right now. Yeah. Now by the time by the time this airs, 
we'll find, we'll probably already know. Yeah, I'll, right already, or wrong. I'll already be proven wrong. That's what I'm saying. So let so let's guess. Now that we don't know, what gets promoted? Well, on paper, I would say Tom Breeze versus Dan Kelly. I agree. Uh, just because, oh God, poor Kelly. Uh, but uh, Tom Breeze is a big uh, rising star in the UK, and he, you know, I, I do think that he he will deliver some, or that this fight will deliver so, uh, an exciting finish. But are you leaning another way because you I, qualified? You said on paper. On paper, yeah. But after being very live, I am saying that the Italian Carlo Perosoli Jr., who stepped up on short notice to fight Brad Scott in a very winnable matchup for him. Uh, Style wise, uh, for those who missed out, uh, uh, Carlo Pedrosoli Jr., he was uh, matched up against former UFC fighter and Cage Warriors champion Nicholas Dalby uh, in the Cage Warriors debut in Sweden. It was a fight where most of us were all picking Dalby because that was his fight to win, but Pedrosoli Jr. stepped up and delivered. Good fight. Uh, really good fight. I mean, it, he just went from like submission attempt to submission attempt to you know just you know head kick to takedown. Just so much exciting stuff. That's that was a main card performance. Uh, and after we interviewed him afterwards, and he said, uh, "I feel like I'm ready for the UFC," and he proved that he was. Uh, by got in right after. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I don't know. People should keep an eye out on that fight, uh, especially as Brad Scott, which is an opponent who will stand and bang, who is willing to take a couple strikes to move forward and to deliver one of his own. Uh, that's a fight of an eye candidate. A dark horse on the entire card. Keep an eye out for it. What about, all right, dark horse, wild card here. What about Molly McCann? What about moving Molly McCann to the main card? I mean, obviously. It makes sense. You don't have a women's fight on there, so that will, you know, add a women's fight to the main card. On top of that, you know, it might be that that kickoff, you know. I mean, all the, I guess it just depends what you want. I mean, if I think the reason they had her so low on, I mean, well, first of all, she's making her USC debut. Yeah. But I think you know they had her kind of low on the card because they wanted to get the the people in the building early, right? Start yeah, building that, that makes sense. Because otherwise, that's a that would be a solid start. I mean, because since this card is built up around there until anyway, I mean, I don't think any of us would fault the UFC for putting Molly McCann. Right, kind of kick off the kick off. I mean, yeah, you, the man, the reception today. You know, they did bring her to open workouts. Yeah. Kudos to the UFC for recognizing. Oh yeah, that even move. though she's making her debut, let's bring her to the open workouts, and she got a huge pop today. Mm -hmm. And and to tell you a little, you know, whether this, <laughs> whether she's nervous or not, this is this is just kind of a funny little side story. So she was at the visit to the Everton grounds as well. She's actually a, a huge uh, Everton supporter. Oh. Uh, she actually, this is funny. She grew up playing in the Liverpool youth system, uh, but became an Everton fan. So oh I don't know how like I don't know what that transformation football, was. Football, Romeo and Juliet hey, going it's on. It's crazy. Uh, so she was there. So we got to hang out and talk a little bit and all that. Uh, first time I had met her and, and talked to her. But then during the open workout day, you know, she went first, and then she kind of went out and took pictures and stuff like that. The next person is out there working out. All of a sudden, I'm filming, and I feel somebody tug on my shorts. And I'm like, who the hell was that? And I turn around. It was Molly McCann. <laughs> she she damn near pantsed me in front of and, – and, 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 you know, I'm going to say she was kind of nice because my belt was kind of loose. I didn't really have it tightened up. Like, she kind of totally pantsed me right there for damn, everybody. And we could have got him that scoop. All so, I would have had to do is turn her uh, off. So, it, you know, if you think she's nervous – Nah, she's out here pants and reporters uh, <laughs> right before the open So I, I don't know. We'll see. I, it, it would be tough, maybe. I, you know, I could see. I mean, listen, you're talking about again somebody making their USC debut against a, mm. a relative neophyte as well, and Julian Robertson. So maybe you, you would worry about, uh, you know, the integrity of the main car. But I mean, come on. Let's be honest. At this point, I mean, integrity. Right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they're, they're, what's wrong with that? I mean, I think yeah. that'd be a nice little pop. Uh, definitely. Uh, I, I, yeah, those two are the the most logical fights to move up. Uh, I would say. Uh, uh, Trevor Smith, Elias Theodoro, I guess. I mean, but so why is that fight on this card? All right, so <laughs> <laughs> sorry if I'm this blunt. It's it's a couple. Of I was just I thought you were gonna say why is it on Fight Pass? I'm like, well, it's the Fight Pass featured card, and they're doing all that. But it, yeah, it is weird. It's right? a Canadian versus an American, and nobody like that's here. That's the only place that could get it done. Yeah, right. It, it doesn't make any sense. When I saw it fight, I was just like, wait, wait am I look? No, that's. Really, on this card, who who's gonna be cheering for any of them? Like, yeah, it is wild. Uh, yeah, who's gonna who are they gonna be pulling? So I, I did say that. I talked to I talked to Elias. Yeah, right. It's Commonwealth, right? You gotta go. You know. Oh, also, just most people would be anti-American regardless. So. Jesus Christ! <laughs> if you had an American fighting a Canadian in Sweden, you'd they'd be rooting for uh, the Canadian. Sorry to say it. It's, I, just, it's just you're just being honest. <laughs> yeah. Just being honest. Uh, no, listen. Um, 
I sit down and talk to Elias Theodore. First of all, uh, I was there while he was doing a Facebook chat, uh, and then and then I talked to him as well. Uh, he's got a lot of hot sauce lines in his repertoire this week. You know, he's fighting Trevor Hot Sauce mm. Smith. He's like, right. I know he's hot sauce, but I put that shit on everything. It ain't nothing to me. And then he had something <laughs> like uh, – what do he say? Uh, I'm gonna show him my sriracha is better or something. So he's got, he's got. He's well, he's got been showing off uh, his sriracha in Invicta. I can tell you that much, dude. So check this out. So uh, you know, do you know? Have you seen like he tweeted like he's gonna make a calendar, uh, like a like a like a ring boy oh, for calendar? Real? I missed that. So he said it, and I thought he was joking, but he's totally serious. Like he's gonna do like a ring boy calendar. Uh, and he like he even said like I mean who wouldn't want Derek Lewis as Mr. July like he, like <laughs> he wants to get in like all these other fighters and do like a ring boy calendar and he's like he's like I'm telling you he's like I've I've run the numbers on it. like this will make money and the people that perform like the people that that, that volunteer and do this like. I'll cut them in the profits, and and they're gonna make money. And I was, I, I, I thought he was joking. But he's really gonna make a ring boy counter, and he's gonna continue doing this ring boy thing. It's not, it wasn't a one off. Of course, he's done it twice already. He's doing it uh, another. He said uh, he's doing it for a a local promotion in Canada, and I guess Vice is gonna follow him. And oh, and and, damn. and he said he's like, listen, you're gonna see it's all gonna make more sense. We're gonna do this this thing with like. Uh, empowerment of women or you know it's, it's gonna have more of a social message than just you know him being a gimmicky ring boy or whatever but uh yeah it was kind of interesting i i talked to him and i'm not gonna play all that it's on youtube but if you're interested he te- first of all he talked about a movie that he's in he teased a big announcement that he's gonna make that's gonna change things he wouldn't I, he wouldn't tell me what it was off the air either mm-hmm. um but he you know he he said that he's he's pretty close to a place where he'll make more money outside of fighting then he does fighting and that he can just fight just like he's like I don't care if I lose anymore because you know I don't need the other half like it's just I'm just doing this because it's fun and I love it and that was kind of interesting you know like Damn. Elias you know sometimes you look at him and you're like this goofy son of a gun he's just you know get, yeah. right he's got his head on straight man he's he's making some good moves obviously for yeah I mean business boy I mean yeah and I gotta say I love the idea of you know the the ring boy calendar I mean Hey, that's Especially if Derek Lewis is Mr. July. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> just give me ten copies of that. Just all Derek Lewis all year round. I, I, I mean, I for sure know how how to get my girlfriend more interested in MMA anyway. If that becomes a reality, Derek um, Lewis, Mr. July. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, then the first fight on the card: Lena Landsberg versus Gene Mazzani. Um, I will say this: uh, Gina Mazzani. I had a great conversation with her to too. I, I put her on my schedule because. She, in fairness, like she trains at Extreme Couture. My son trains, and I want to get some love to Vegas, you know. But I like Gina Mazzani's attitude a lot. She's super early in her career, and I would encourage anybody um, to, to to go seek this out. It's on YouTube again. It's on. It'll be on MMA Junkie also. But her attitude is so awesome. She's super early in her career. You know, she jumped into the UFC, took a fight with Sarah McMahon on short notice. I mean, like, yeah. God, God bless, welcome to the UFC. Right. Uh, you know, her next fight, she ends up traveling over to Shanghai. She won that fight. Now she's here uh, in the UK, uh, you know, says she wished she would have fought sooner. She, I mean, she's just got an amazing attitude. I, I know she's still early in her career, and there's probably a lot of people that are like, who are you talking about? I never even watched her or only remember the McMahon loss. But this girl, man, her head, her head is on, like, it's on the right way. I, I, oh, I feel this is yeah. also. I mean, it's a winnable fight for her. And that's I know uh, that's saying you know she's still going up against a countryman of mine. But uh, I, I'm totally down with Eugenia Mazzani. A very strong like work ethic. Like you know, real. Uh, yeah. Like exactly. Exactly. I, I like goes it. Goes in there, gets it. Like kind of like a Neil Magny style of like I'm gonna go in there and I'm just gonna fucking fight and I'm gonna do a good job regardless of who I'm she fighting she had and the coolest line because she said listen you know because she knows that Lena's had some tough results right Yeah. but Lena's fought some absolute beasts right she's fought nothing but monsters and uh, Gina actually said she said I actually chose to wear um, white trunks and then she's like well the gray you know because they have like the grayish silver mm-hmm. she was like I chose to wear that color She's like, because I believe this is going to be one of those, like, bloody-ass fights. Oh. And she wants to have those, like, blood-stained trunks <laughs> as, like, proof of her, like, you know, fighting ever. She's like, I know people love those hardcore bloody fights. And she's like, and I chose the light-colored kit because I want to have that blood-soaked, you know, kit to show that, like, I fucking went in there and I gave it. Hey, she just made an extra fan out of me. Right? I love it. Dude, I'm telling you, it's it's, it's worth it to go seek it out. Uh so it's gonna be. I mean, we'll see how this card goes. I think. I think there are some fights on here. I oh, think. I mean, it's built around Till, and if you know, if you're not a hardcore, if you're a casual fan and you're looking for names, I get it. 
you know, they don't necessarily hugely stand out, but I, I do think it's going to be a, a, a fun fight card. Uh, and, uh, and I promise I'm going to do a little and a half episode after this, no matter how <laughs> and what it takes, uh, because I haven't been able to do it lately. And this is great. I, I, oh my God, because I had booked everything to Dublin when I booked everything here, like I'd already spent money and I had to do like rebooking fees and stuff. So like oh, I actually yeah. flew into London Gatwick, took a train up here, which wasn't that bad. Uh, this isn't a huge country, and the train's not that bad. But on the way back, I have – because it's like the middle of the night, and I need to get home on Monday because my wife is going to Mexico on Tuesday to go see her family, and I want to see my kid and all that. Mm. Uh, I've got to take like four and a half hours of trains from here to London because like, oh, I've got to connect. It. So it's going to be a bitch, but we're, we're going we're gonna to enjoy it. British anyway. rail is a bitch. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. On a, it shouldn't take an hour from Manchester to Liverpool. It should not take that right? long. It's closer than that. It should take 20 minutes. I mean, in Sweden, that distance would be covered by train by 20 oh, minutes. Oh, yeah. They do it different here. They do it different. Yeah. All right, listen. Uh, b- before we cut out, I, I did want to ask you, um, you know, the big news in the UFC this week, of course, the UFC signing with ESPN. We'd already heard about the first half of the ESPN Ooh. deal. Now we know the second half. Um, I, I guess I want to ask you from a global perspective. I mean, do you guys give a shit about news like that? I mean, like, I mean, because in the, in, the, in the U.S., I do think this is a big deal, right? Yeah. I, I do think it's a big deal. I mean, ESPN – is still, you know, there's stories about how their their viewership is declining, but every every viewership is declining. You know, people are cutting the cord, whatever. It's still a powerhouse brand, man. It's a powerhouse yeah. brand. It's a recognized brand, and I think it means a lot. Um, and the other thing that that I really love about this is the fact that it's not split over two networks. You know, there was talk about splitting it over yeah. two networks, and I get it. And I'd heard some people say, "Well, man, how cool is that if we're the UFC?" And we're on the two biggest channels, and you know, sports channels. We're on ESPN and Fox. I'm like, okay, that sounds cool in theory, but number one, your customer is gonna hate having to find you. Like, which yeah. one's on? And the other thing that scared me too was, you know, like, if it's the week of a Fox fight, how much is ESPN gonna be talking about it? If it's the week of an ESPN fight, how much is Fox gonna be talking about? It? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't want to be a girl split between two guys. That's it, man. And I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't like the concept. And people were like, oh no, this could be great. I'm like. Ah, this is not the NFL. This is not the NBA. Yeah. It's not that point. You know, like we need it to be in one place where one channel is is invested and, and they want to build it up. So I'm happy with the way it turned out. But but I wonder, you know, you over in Sweden. I mean, when you, when you hear news like this, I mean, does it does it register? Does it mean something, or do you just go, okay, that's nice? I mean, definitely for us for us writing about it, it, it means quite a bit. Uh, but I mean, let's be real. Uh, our our, our our readers aren't really that interested. Right. For them, it's just like, oh, okay, what streaming service do we use now? Uh, but just because, I mean, it's just some stuff that doesn't, hasn't broken out as much. I mean, Twitter's another one of those things that it's like, people don't care about Twitter in Sweden. They don't use it. Like That's funny. Yeah. Uh, well, but it's because, you know, attention span as opposed to American attention span. <laughs> <laughs> 140 oh, I characters. See. I see. Just Shots fired. I see the chat. Hey, I think we got like 240 characters now. You see? Oh, did they raise you it? See? Okay. You okay. See? Fair enough. Our attention span finally grew enough that they could, that they could raise it a little bit. <laughs> okay. No, okay. Uh, no, you know, it's listen, I, I, uh, I get it. Here, here's, so here's a couple of things, too. Uh, first of all, $1.5 billion yeah. over five years in one market just in the u.s so for everybody it was like oh man the, the u.s you know the usc is in trouble man the financial that's one market you know mm-hmm. and i know there's not another 1.5 billion dollar market out there but there's a whole lot of smaller markets out there you know what yeah I mean? they don't need a number one of those big ones that's it and the other thing is and, and here's what i what i don't know and i haven't had a chance to talk to anybody yet and i don't even know if anybody would ever admit this or not but the strategy of of announcing the ESPN Plus deal first mm. and then the ESPN deal. I don't know if that was done on purpose or not, but if it was, it was brilliant, right? Because if you'd have said, yeah. hey, we, we're doing ESPN and then we're going to figure out something else, and then you come back and you're like, oh, we got ESPN Plus, people would just be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Like, I don't care. You know, like you're already on ESPN. ESPN, what do I care about your digital streaming service? The fact that they announced the digital streaming service first – that I think brought a lot of awareness to ESPN Plus, a lot of you know attention to ESPN Plus. If that was done on purpose and it wasn't just done like because that's how the contracts got finalized, that's how things got done. It was f- 
brilliant, I think. Because oh, I think it brought way more attention to ESPN+. I had no Plus. idea what ESPN Plus was before that right? story. Then all of a sudden, I'm looking it up. I'm like, oh, okay, they do hockey matches as well. I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know, then I'm all of a sudden, I'm reading about it. Oh, they do it. a ton of stuff. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, There's apparently. It's, so much it's on there. It's a great there. deal. I mean, it made me realize, oh, shit, ESPN Plus is actually a pretty solid streaming service. It's not bad, man. I, You know, for instance, we have, like, a new soccer team in Vegas, the Las Vegas Lights. I mean, again, it's 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 – a, a lower tier soccer team, whatever, like they stream their games on there. Like it's it's weird. I mean, it's not yeah. top tier stuff, but it's just got like a ton of shit on it. It's only five bucks a month, so I'm gonna be interested to see how they do the pricing with Fight Pass. And I'm also, I mean, that's basically what most of our readers have been like. Okay, what's it gonna cost? Yeah, like, <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, everybody thought they'd be able to save some money, maybe. But I don't know. It was brilliant. I just think you know, had they announced, hey, we're doing 15 shows on ESPN and five on ESPN Plus, you're like, all right. And then they come back later and they're like, oh, by the way, we're doing 15 more on ESPN Plus. I just don't think anybody would care. But yeah. doing it the other way around, I thought was brilliant. It's so, a nice little switcheroo. I like it. We'll see. I don't know if they did it on purpose or maybe they just happened into yeah, it. Yeah, just really good luck. <laughs> really good luck. Really good. Luck. All right. Well, speaking of really good luck. Uh, I don't know. That's not even a good segue. I just want to drink. I just want to drink a little bit and go to bed because it's I'm been a down, long day. I'm down for that. Yeah. It's been about a 20-hour work day. So well, we spent twice as long of a time as we needed to on trains just because of it. Like we had to change trains twice, which makes no sense in a first-world country. That's so ridiculous. Yeah. You're all right. We're exhausted. Yeah. We need to. St- Hopefully, drink we didn't and suck. sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening.